Welcome to what I am calling part three of the white LED versus red blue LED grow test. Um, I decided I was going to do a little segment in its own little video on the power readings of different lights here and uh, mainly the two lights that I was using for the grow test. Um, I didn't want to do one whole video on the plants uh, and this at the same time because uh, the last two videos I did were a little bit long so I'm going to try to shorten this up a little bit and there's a lot of people already probably asking what is the par readings uh, for the light so I'm going to go ahead and get right into it here. Um, so as you see in the last two videos uh, you see me use these. This is an LE, uh, I think Lighting Ever is a name brand. It's a 50 watt, 3000 K, uh, 50 watt LED. Um, and uh, that's pulling 50 watts from the wall. The other light, which is not sitting in front of you, but it pretty much looks identical to this, and that is uh, the red-blue LED. Um, 50 watts also, but that's pulling 38 watts from the wall, and that is the reason why I was doing these PAR readings, because I said I was going to do two tests. One test was, was going to be at the lights with the same level, uh, and the other test was going to be at the light with the lights uh, at different levels, depending on the PAR output. Um, so I went ahead and made this uh, graph here, this little line graph. I'm going to throw it up on the video so you can see it better. Um, so I threw in also a, uh, a Cree uh, LED house light, uh, just a regular light you get from the big box store or whatever. Uh, it's 65 watt equivalent and it says it's pulling 9.5 watts from the wall. Uh, this is a BR30 flood. I did a just for just for uh, you know good measure. I figured I'd throw that in there too to show you the difference in the power output between uh, this type of light and that type of light. So uh, let me talk about the power readings here. And by the way, I use my Hydrofarm uh, light meter here. They're not that expensive. Uh, actually, the this is pretty cheap, about as cheap as you can get, uh, and it's fairly accurate. Now there's a lot of people out there probably saying, you oh, know, these meters suck. Um, but you know what, if it's off by 10, it's not really that big of a deal because we're not doing, uh, you know, a huge scientific experiment here and with a lab and all that stuff. It's, it's very close and it's going to, you know, do its job. So, um, so that's what I use for the test. So the power readings here, if you look on the video, uh, show it to you. The yellow is the 3000 K white LED light, the 50 watt. Um, at one inch, it was 3,000 micromole. Uh, very surprising how strong it is. I know it's not typically what you're going to have your plant plant height at, but actually, fluorescent lights. It's not uncommon for people to have plants with just a few inches of the light, so it's not really um, that far fetched here. But um, 3,000 micromole at uh, one inch, and then you go down to it was around 2,000 at 2 inch, uh, and then you went down to uh, about 1,200 at uh, 3 inch, and then you can kind of look on down the graph from there. Um, the optimal range for, the optimal distance to put the plants under these lights, uh, or the, the white light anyways, would probably be around 4 inches uh, through its adult stage. If you put it closer than that through the seedling stage, you're going to probably burn your seedlings out. Um, in that case, you probably want to have it about 12 inches. Uh, and, and actually at about 12 inches, you're at about 200 micromole. Um, so that's still pretty bright, because um, if you think about uh, on a cloudy day, inside the house, you know, inside of a window where your house plants might be sitting, indirect sunlight, the micromole output, or the, micro, the, the power reading you're going to see in the meter is around 20. Um, it's going to vary depending on the window and the location and all that, but it's, it's around, it's going to be that low. So that's just a little something to um, go off of. So if you're going to put seedlings in a windowsill in indirect sunlight, that's about how much light it is. So 200 micromole sounds like it's not that much, but it's actually uh, quite a bit. So, and then onto the, uh, the red blue LED, you could see um, that we were still above just above 1,500 micromole at uh, one inch. Um, and then it drops off pretty quickly at two inches, which is around 900 micromole. Um, still pretty good amount. Then you go to three inches at 600, four inches at 400, 300 at five inches. Uh, and then we're at about 225 at six inches. 
Um, and that's still pretty good. So you can see there's a pretty big difference between the red, blue, and the white LED as far as the light output on them, as far as what the PAR meter is telling me. Uh, and then as far as the Cree house light, um, the, the BR30, at one inch from that light, it's only at about 700 micromole, which is, which is still, you know, you can still grow plants with that um, if you had it one inch from that bulb. And you probably could do that, and it probably wouldn't burn your plants because it doesn't get very warm, depending on the plant, obviously. Uh, but then you go down, let's just talk about, you know, down four inches from that light, you're at about 225 micromole. And that is, that is still uh, very usable to, to grow your plants with. Um, obviously not a very big plant, because um, you see if it drops down to... Uh, at about 12 inches from that light, we're already at basically what you would be getting from your windowsill. You might as well just be putting your plant in the windowsill to get indirect sunlight rather than having your plant 12 inches from that single light bulb. So if you want to grow um, plants under that light, you probably are going to need a couple of them, not just one. As I kind of stated in uh, part one of the video, you're not going to be able to grow a plant under just a single light, um, at least not a very big one, and you're not going to get a very good result with that. Um, since most of that light is in the direct center of that light and it's not spread out through the outer edges. Uh, those are the power readings from the light. Uh, we're already at about seven minutes of this video, so I hope that helps some of you and answers some of the questions I'm sure a lot of you might have been asking. Um, so, you know, leave something in the comments below. If you have any questions, I can probably run uh, a test on, you know, maybe whatever you want um, within reason. Uh, so I got my meter around here. I got the lights. Just, uh, you know, just ask and I'll, I'll run a test for you and then I'll post it in the comment for you. Um, and until then, we'll see you in, I guess we'll call it part four, where I actually grow the tomato plants um, in hydroponic setup using the cracking method. And we're going to grow that under the lights just as we did before, but they'll be at different heights. Uh, so I think the best uh, test to do with the lights at uneven distances uh, would be to actually put the red blue at about five inches from the plant height, the plant canopy, and the white LED should be about seven and a half inches from the plant canopy. And that's going to give us um, around 300 micromole for each plant. And that will uh, kind of conclude the results uh, and put it to rest as far as the red, blue versus white LED. Um, because in part two, you saw that the stems were so weak that the plants would collapse under their own weight. Um, well, we're going to find out if that's because of the light spectrum itself or just because of the uh, amount of light it was actually receiving overall. Um, I, I personally, I think I, I believe that it's just because of the, the spectrum. There's a lot of things that point to that, uh, but we will find out in part four, so we'll see you then.